All right, it's currently 5.40 a.m., but it's light out because it's summer. Flying this. I'm gonna be the maiden, go down to Phoenix, picking up some bodies. I'm also gonna be flying the Spitfire and the F-35. So, let's go. Oh, there he is. <laughs> you ready to go watch some planes fly? I'm ready to eat my cheesecake. Oh, I brought snacks too. Like I brought snacks. Wow. Okay. Man of the F-117. Goes nothing. Heavy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, there. Nice landing. Thanks. <laughs> Looks like a flight. You need to push forward, I guess. Go all the way forward. All or nothing. That was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to get the battery forward in this thing. That should be good. I don't want to. It's right there. Let's try again. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Oh my god. I'd say dial it back on the roll to move the pitch. Yeah, it needs a lot of elevator. That sounds cool. Okay, I'm gonna land. I need to check the battery. No, it's pretty quiet. Oh man, R rolls are, turns are sketchy. <laughs> it worked! Oh my god, that's, that's so cool. cool! That is super cool. <laughs> it's so underpowered. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Oh my god. It needed almost no trim, too. That's crazy. That's really cool. <laughs> that was fast. It's it goes cool. surprisingly fast. It's a little quick, yeah. It, it has a really high stall speed, though. I can feel it in the turns. It just wants to drop like a rock. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. But...
Oh, oh wow, it stalls really nice. Man, that looks slick. That looks deadly, dude. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay. It's really, there's no directional stability. <laughs> All right, I need to land it. I'm literally hitting my timer. <laughs> It flew. The Nighthawk flew. It worked. It's crazy. Do you want a chip? Yeah, I can get you. I want a chip. We're here in, in like East Phoenix, snacking before we go back up. It doesn't fly very good. It's really unstable, like the real thing. It doesn't have a ton of thrust. No, th no things. Go on, chip. It doesn't fly very good. It's got a really low thrust to weight ratio even even when i'm moving so i don't know how it's going to fly at altitude when we get back home but we'll see we'll do some tests um it's also really unstable gotcha. and on top of that it's not it's it's really difficult in the turns but it lands really good and it glides really good so i might make a glider too and we're gonna see so yeah we're gonna do more testing might make a version three of it I'm gonna break down how I built it and every, everything once we're back. All right, so overall, made in success. First things first, I just wanna say shout out to RC Foam Flyers and Paul Betty, who runs that channel and runs the web store. That's where I got the plans for Nighthawk. So this bad boy right here, take those off. Those are where the plans are from. I'll link is going to be in the description to the website if you want to go check it out he has a ton of videos a ton of build videos of how he made it this is a derivation of it his is a prop and slot this is obviously the 64 millimeter edf uh, going over electronics the electronics uh, i got from a friend they're stripped out of an e-flight 64 millimeter edf f15 so if a lot of you guys are familiar with edfs and um the types that are out there for good prices. The E-Flight F-15 is a really good deal and it comes with a lot of power for the power system. We just took that power system and just ripped it out and then shoved it into this. Now, I did want to talk about the design of this jet for a little bit. And first things first, it is not stable at all. It does not have a lot of thrust. Um, when it comes to the Nighthawk, the biggest challenge here was the intakes and the exhaust, among other things. With the intakes, because of the Nighthawks, in real life, because of the Nighthawks' strange design and also requirement for it to be stealthy, and since it was the first stealth fighter, the intakes weren't how you normally see them on conventional fighter jets. And because of that, when translated to an RC version, for a scale look, they're not that big and they don't allow a lot of air. That being said, for my version, I'm probably gonna figure out a solution to probably put uh, cheater holes in the bottom, like NACA ducts or something, so I can just get more airflow to the EDF. The second thing is the exhaust. So one thing to note on the exhaust is on a normal EDF, you really want a circular exhaust. Run around 90% of whatever the diameter is, is, the, is what the diameter should be for the exit exhaust. Because of the Nighthawk and due to its stealth profile, it doesn't allow for a generally circular shape. So what I did was I just squished the thrust tube down um, into more oval shape and then expanded it outward on this thrust plate. You can see it here, how it slopes down and then straight and level. So what that allows, um, specifically for this version, if you guys are familiar with aerodynamic properties and um, Bernoulli's principle, accelerated airflow through a Venturi um, exerts lower pressure. That being said, if you also reverse it and you go from a constricted airflow to expanded uh, Venturi, it increases static pressure while uh, decreasing dynamic pressure. This 
does have a little effect by limiting its both its top speed and how much thrust it can produce at um, speeds. However, I did notice that it, it is enough of an effect to maintain some sort of angle of attack where I can get enough airflow into the inlet and get the engine spooled up to where it can start effectively making thrust. That being said, this exhaust is by no means optimal. The whole time I was flying, I needed to run it at basically 90 to 100% the entire time. Um, it did glide pretty good, uh, especially in ground effect, but that's mostly just because of how drag, uh, how, how much drag this airframe creates. As you can see all the, all the shapes, it's very geometric, all of its facets and angles. It is not conducive to an aerodynamic shape at all. So before I built this version, I did build version one, which is here in the gray prototype scheme. This was just a mock-up to see how it would work. Originally, I was gonna do this as a glider version and, or strap a rocket to the back and see how it worked. This is also a little different from the original plans. Both of these versions, I that internally, I diverged a lot from the original plans. So I just wanted to uh, take that into account. A couple modifications I noticed right off the back that I wanted to make was increasing um, the dihedral or increasing the angle between the vertical stabilizers just to make it a little more accurate. It does decrease longitude, sorry, vertical stability. Um, there is not a lot of uh, stability when it comes to tracking straight with this design, um, but I did just want to make it look scale. So that is one side effect. The other thing was this does have a K F airfoil, or some of you may know it as a K-step airfoil. That airfoil, and with the design, it calls for a beveled edge on both the top and the bottom. With the design that I made, I opted to do a folding design, which is how I got my wing strength up by folding the paper over. Another modification that I made was changing the control surfaces. So as you can see here, um, these follow the length of the trailing edge. Originally on the design, they follow, um, they're more flat, they're angled differently. I angled mine to follow the trailing edge to make it look more like the real thing. Also, this on this pre-version, you can see there's a gap between where the K-step airfoil ends and where the Elevon starts. I, on the final black version, on the production version, I guess you could say, I adjusted that where I moved the Elevon all the way to where the K-step airfoil uh, met the lower uh, foam plate of the wing, just to increase control effectiveness at lower speeds. Moving back to the black version here, another adjustment I did was I embedded the servos into the wings. Um, this is optional. This is just how I chose to do it. It does reduce the profile and reduce the drag a little bit. That's just something I chose to do. It does make it harder to service just a little bit if you, you know something breaks, you need to fix it. Uh, but that's one thing I realized and I just accepted when I chose to do it. And then finally opening it up, um, the biggest thing I'm gonna change here and the biggest modification I'm gonna make so I can fly this plane in the future is, so on the intake here, obviously I have the intakes on the side ports here where the normal intakes are. And those being the only areas, I wanted to maximize the amount of airflow going from there into the EDF while still making it roughly aerodynamic because if it's just left open and there's no way to guide the air, it's going to be less efficient than if I were to constrict it yet guide the air, which is what I aim to do here. Um, the one thing I did notice was I didn't glue this section down, this poster board, and it's still flexible, which meant that at, at higher power settings, uh, the foam board started, the poster board started to flex. And at higher power settings, this would expand outward and constrict the airflow going in. This piece of duct tape I added at the park when I made it, just to prevent that poster board from flexing more. One modification I'm gonna make is I'm gonna make this more secure. And I'm also gonna streamline a lot more of the intake on the inside of the EDF. Now, how I did my hatch was I just took, there's a little magnet here at the back. This is a rip, the magnet was ripped out of an old um, E-Flight Trojan that had crashed. And then I just put a popsicle stick here. And then that, that just allows me to connect it in like this and it slots into place. With a, and I have a little um, tape tab so I can just pull it out. So as for lessons learned with this aircraft, um, there's a ton and I'm still learning. This is my first EDF that I've actually ever built. It's my third EDF I've ever flown. When it comes to EDFs and their efficiency, they're not that good. 
just because of their design and the nature of the design. That being said, they're super cool. This thing looks so scale in the air. It was very unstable and really honestly really hard to fly, but it was really worth it because of how cool it looked. I have yet to figure out if I want to make another one. Um, I don't know if I'd make it another EDF or a profit slot, but there's a lot that you can do with this design, but there's also a lot of things that restrict you with this, with this design. So I really want to explore that some more amid other projects. That being said, I'm still going to modify this. I'm still going to try and optimize it. This is a super cool plane. I'm super happy with the, how the results turned out. And hopefully if I don't crush it, you'll be seeing more of this plane, a lot more on my YouTube channel.